Hello, video number six about logic programming. I figured it's not logical programming, it's logic programming. Sorry for that in the last five videos. This time I'm going to explain the cut operator. To spoil it a little bit, the cut operator manipulates the backtracking, the way backtracking works. And to be more precise, it tells Prolog which decisions do not have to be reconsidered. Let's look at an example for that. Here's a question, here's what we are given, what we have given. And we start with the question. First, before maybe before we start, we should think of this one. Look at this. You can combine this with this and then this. And then you end up with the empty clause. And then everything is fine. But let's check what's happening, actually. You combine it with rule number one. And you're left with this one. And then you figure, oh, I can apply that rule. Now you're left with this one. And now we tell Prolog, do not reconsider until here. That's everything that's done behind the scenes. We end up with the R. We figure there's no R, so this is not going to end well. Usually, as we learned before, we do a backtracking to the last decision that we made, which was here. But because we had the cut operator here, we told Prolog to not reconsider the decision for this rule. So all the other rules, maybe we have more rules here, all the other rules will not be applied because we had the cut operator here. This decision will not be remade. And that's it, basically. But I guess you don't have an idea of uh, how is this useful. Why would you actually use it? I'm going to explain this in the next example, which is here. I'm going with student and member again. We want to uh, check out if someone is a member or not. Maybe. A member of the library in order to check if someone is able to read a, uh, to rent a book and let's first look at this stuff so if this is basically this works like this if we have a student then x is an adult and if x is not a student then x is a teacher this is basically a function and to implement an if function in Prolog, you can use this logic. But before we get into the logic, just see these two facts. John is a student and Mark is a teacher. This looks more like the rules we learned before. Let's try that out before I explain the rules. Our question is, is John a member? We apply this rule here, which is very long. So I will make it a little bit shorter. And we end up with only the right part adult and teacher. So this is basically just a usual function and we check can we do something with the function and we find this function definition here and we apply that and we set p to student john, q to adult john and r to teacher john. Let's make this rule number one, this rule number two, three, four, five and we apply rule number one. Then we of course as we learned end up with the thing on the right and as p this P was the student, then we end up with this one. Student John, cut operator. And remember Q is the middle. The middle is an adult or adult, I'm not sure. Now we apply rule number four because we can. We end up with the cut operator only. And it tells us to not make any reconsiderations. We end up with an adult of John and that tells us, so it's getting very less, we're not going anywhere with the adult of John. We cannot say anything. So we have to backtrack. Let's check out where did we do the last decision. There was, we did the last decision here. We choose rule number one instead of choosing rule number two. The backtracking operator tells us now to not reconsider this. So to not choose rule number two here, but rather just fail. Now let's imagine if we would have not used this operator. Of course, we would have backtracked until here. We would have chosen this rule and we would have ended up when, with John being a teacher, which also does not return anything good, but is definitely wrong. Let's try the same example with Mark. We ask, ask is Mark a member? Once again, we apply this rule number three and we again end up with this again we now apply rule number one and again we will end up with the first then we got the cut operator 
and then the last one. No, sorry, the middle one, of course, the middle one. Why is it the middle? Because the middle is going to be here. Okay, now we see, Do can we, can we remove the student mark from here? We check out the rules and we figure we cannot remove the S. So we don't go anywhere. We're not going anywhere with this. So we do a backtrack as we're used to. We go back till here because on this point we choose to choose rule number two instead of uh, choose rule number one instead of two, rule number two. But this time we didn't hit the cut operator yet. And because we didn't hit the cut operator yet, we are still allowed to reconsider our choice. And this time we are going to choose rule number two, which leaves us with a teacher mark. And for that one, we can apply rule number five and end up with the empty clause. And therefore, this is going to be true. And now if you think of what has happened here and in our last example, we should actually write false here. If you compare these two, then you will figure out that what actually happened is exactly what an if statement is. So in this case, the cut operator pretends from going back from executing the else. If this is true, then only keep going with this one. Don't care about what is here. But if this is not true, as you can see here, then this will naturally fail and we go back and we try again with the next rule that is applicable and this is that is this rule here number two maybe you will need a little bit time for this to sink in that's basically it for the cut operator and now i have to admit something at the end of this video i want to go back to the first example i said we will backtrack until here and not reconsider our choice now the question is still for me how much do we actually go back and which choices are not being reconsidered anymore? I learned this, I knew that stuff, but I forgot to write it down and it's been like a year since I've done this. Um, if you know the answer, then please let me know in the comments and I will put it into the video description. Would be really helpful. It's very hard to find information on that without really digging deep into prologue. But for now, just take it as you don't reconsider certain choices. And it's used, for example, for implementing an if method. It's also used for implementing a not method, which will kind of look like this. This is basically equal to. So to implement this not over here, you need that part. I leave the logic how this works up to you, but I already tell you that um, not is difficult. Or let's say bring some surprises into your logic. And if you want to have like a, a formula, like the PQ stuff, then this is looking like this. And you could use it like this. Okay, I think that's it for this whole series. Maybe I figure out some things I didn't explain and add them at the end. If you have any questions, comments about any of these videos, leave them in the comments. Make sure to read the video description. Um, also, I'd be happy if someone would explain this stuff in the video description or at least put a link where this is very easily explained so that one can jump right into it without learning all that stuff again. And of course, as always, I hope this series helps and I hope you can now really go into prologue programming and start with the usual tutorials about the real coding itself. A lot of talking. Thanks for watching.